Okay, when we start concerning ourselves with the use of negative punishment to alter behavior, meaning withholding reward to alter behavior in dogs, we have to keep in mind certain aspects of fluent behaviors or behaviors that the dogs have learned and are expecting a reward. There are what we call spikes of dopamine in dogs when they become fluent with certain behaviors and start to expect rewards. And dopamine is a chemical released in the brain that is highly reinforcing. It makes uh, anticipation of reward highly reinforcing. It's the substance released in the brain that makes people addicted uh, to certain stimulants and things like that. Cocaine uh, creates a dopamine release. There's a variety of these types of addictive behaviors that are related to dopamine production in the brain. And what it does is it makes an animal uh, like the anticipation of reward more than they actually like the reward. And so they've done some studies where they trained monkeys to do specific behaviors and give them a reward for it. And as the monkeys attained fluency in the behavior, meaning they had done the behavior repeatedly, they were very confident about what they were to do, what their job was, and they had been rewarded a number of times, they measured the dopamine spike, or the level of dopamine in their brain, at various points. And what was originally expected was that the monkeys would get a dopamine spike, or elevation in level, dopamine levels, when they got the reward. But what really happened is the dopamine spiked at the point that the monkey was signaled that the behavior was about to commence. So at the beginning of that, and it's whether just recognizing that the situation or the cue to do it or the prompt to do it actually created a spike in dopamine. And it dropped off as the monkey accessed the reward. So for our purposes, if I have a behavior that's been rehearsed repeatedly and been rewarded repeatedly, Withholding reward may not affect that behavior going forward. So if I try to punish it with negative punishment, the dopamine spike has already occurred, and whether or not I reward the dog or not may not affect their final behavior, which is interesting. We use negative punishment frequently in the early stages of our training to teach the dog what's right and wrong. And when we withhold reward as a punishment in the early stages before the dog's attained fluency, it's frequently very effective. But we see with dogs that have rehearsed behaviors for longer periods of time and had lots of rewards that negative punishment is much less effective for those dogs. So an interesting side note for us to keep in mind.